Hemophilia is the royal curse, and it is a recessive trait in which one or more of the proteins required to clot blood is absent. A simple cut on the ear, in the case of Prince Friedrich, took three days to stop the bleeding. Queen Victoria was a carrier of this mutated gene. Two of her daughters carried this gene, who passed it on to their daughters, who passed it on to their sons. It was the men who died from becoming a hemophiliac. And it got passed down to other royal families of Europe from their intermarriages. So in this video, we will see how each one of those with it died. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I transform historic portraits to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life, as well as go through family trees. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more family trees and recreations. And let me know in the comments who you want to see next. Here is her family tree, not in chronological order. It shows who got hemophilia. The circles are women and the squares are men. The purple colored circles are the women who got it and the purple squares are the men who got it. The green are those who were fine. Queen Victoria had nine children and of the nine, three of them got it. The three spread it into the German, Russian, and Spanish royal families. We will start off with her eldest child, Victoria. Victoria married the German prince, later Emperor Frederick III, and she became the German Empress. Her children apparently escaped the hemophilia gene, but through familial love, her second son, Prince Henry of Prussia, married his first cousin, Irene, and she had the doom gene. Together, the first cousins had three children, Princes Valdemar, Sigismund, and Henry. Valdemar and Henry both contracted hemophilia. You'll find that most of the family members with this condition died young through an injury resulting in over excessive bleeding rather than living to old age. In the case of Valdemar, at the end of World War II in 1945, he and his wife fled to Tutsing in Bavaria in light of Russian advance to receive his last blood transfusion. The next day, U.S. Army overran the area, diverging all medical support to concentration camp victims. This prevented his doctors from treating him and he died. He was 56 in 1945. As for his younger brother Henry, it was the year 1904. Henry was four years old. Left unsupervised, he fell off a chair head first. The fall wasn't that bad, but because of his condition, he got a brain hemorrhage and died a few hours later. Their mother, Princess Irene, passed away from seemingly old age in 1953, age 87. Irene was born the third child of Princess Alice, Queen Victoria's third child as well. Princess Alice died from diphtheria and was the first child of Queen Victoria to pass away, age 35, in 1878. She married Louis IV, Grand Duke of Hessen by Rhein, a duchy within the German Empire, and they had seven children, and Irene, Friedrich, and Alex carried the gene. Friedrich was two in 1873 when he stood on a chair to look out an open window at his brother on the opposite room. He fell out 20 feet onto the ground. He died of a brain hemorrhage a few hours later. His sister Alex was Alexandra Fyodorovna, Empress of Russia. She married Tsar Nicholas II. Of her children, Grand Duchess Maria might have had it as she experienced heavy bleeding when her tonsils were removed, but definitely her younger brother and heir, Alexei, inherited it. When his umbilical cord was cut, he kept bleeding for hours. So his mother's worst fear arrived that the only heir to the Russian throne got the disease. It was a real blow to Empress Alexandra. You see, Alexei had a really severe hemophilia, such that a bruise or a simple cut would be life-threatening. That's when they found Rasputin, a peasant monk, to try and heal him. They even hired two Navy sailors to monitor him at all times so he wouldn't fall. In 1912, a simple carriage ride left him unconscious after his still-healing hematoma ruptured. He hemorrhaged in his upper thigh and abdomen. Oh, poor guy. For 11 days he screamed, Oh Lord, have mercy on me and begged his mother, Mama, help me. He asked her to build him a little monument of stones in the woods, and asked when I'm dead, it won't hurt anymore, will it? Coincidentally, Rasputin's words healed him again, but of course, he along with the rest of his family would be assassinated in 1918 from the Russian Revolution. Before we finish this line, Princess Alice's eldest daughter, Victoria. She married her first cousin once removed, Prince Louis of Battenberg. His father was the Prince of hessen Rhein. They had Princess Alice, Prince Philip's mother, who married Andrew of Greece. So, 
Prince Philip's maternal great-grandmother was Princess Alice, his mother's mother's mother. But because Victoria didn't have it, there was no hemophilia through Philip. And also, if we continue along Queen Victoria's children, her second-born child, King Edward VII, did not have the gene either. As a result, Edward's line produced Queen Elizabeth II, who had no hemophilia, and since Philip's line was exempt, through sheer luck, the current royal family does not have hemophilia and probably will not get it in the future. As for Queen Victoria's remaining children, her eighth-born and youngest son was Leopold. He got it. With hemophilia, cold weather causes joint pain, and so his pregnant wife, with their second child, urged him to go to Cannes. There, he slipped and fell, injuring his knee and hitting his head. He died in the early hours of the next morning from a cerebral hemorrhage. He was 30 in 1884. Of his two children, his eldest daughter Alice carried the gene. She lived until 97, though, from 1883 to 1981, dying in her sleep. But she did pass it along when she married her second cousin once removed, Prince Alexander of Tech. She passed the unlucky mutation to her son Rupert. He died in 1928 when he was 20 from sudden bleeding in the brain as a result of a car crash in France, maneuvering to avoid a car, only to hit a tree instead. Finally, we have the youngest child of Queen Victoria, Princess Beatrice. She was the last of Queen Victoria's children to die, nearly 66 years after the first, her elder sister Alice. She married Prince Henry of Battenberg, the younger brother of Louis Mountbatten, her niece Victoria's husband. Beatrice died age 87 in 1944 in her sleep, but gave two of her four children the gift of carrying hemophilia. Her second child, Victoria, married King Alfonso XIII of Spain. While he was fiery and passionate, dabbling in extramarital affairs, she was shy. Hemophilia was now in the Spanish royal family. Four of their six children survived. However, her eldest, Alfonso, died in 1938 when he was 31. Again, from another car crash. His friend Miss Mildred Gaydon swerved to avoid a truck and hit a telephone pole. He appeared to have only minor injuries, but his hemophilia led to fatal internal bleeding. Gonzalo. When he was 19 in 1934, he was driving with his sister on summer holidays while in Austria. Instead of a car, she was forced to swerve around a cyclist, none other than the well-known German jockey Baron Niemens. He was zigzagging and while Trying to pass him, he cut in front of her, and she hit the walls of Krumpendorf Castle. Both seemed fine, but hours later, he too died of internal hemorrhage followed by heart failure. You see, his hemophilia was so advanced that the slightest shock was liable to be fatal. And finally, we have Queen Victoria's final grandson, Lord Leopold. He underwent hip surgery in 1922 in Kensington Palace. Although he appeared to be making a normal recovery, he did have a relapse and died in the morning of the following day. He was only 32 years old. As with the rest of the hemophiliac deaths, his was sudden and unexpected. Today, no one seems to have it. However, because the hemophilia gene usually remains hidden in females who only inherit the gene from one parent, there remains a small chance that the disease could appear again. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Each of your subscriptions has helped this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.